Welcome back, I'm Michelle and I'm here with another Enneagram funny video. Enneagram types at work. Actually, I'm at work today. This is uh, pretty stark, but it's an empty office. I'm an adjunct instructor at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix. I'm piecing together a few of our past videos depicting the Enneagram types in various work situations. Watch and enjoy Enneagram types at work. My references, I've provided, as you can see, their email addresses, their phone numbers, their home addresses, their social security numbers, the names of their firstborn children, and the schools that they attend. Just in case you have a hard time reaching them, you can always call and say it's this school trying to get a hold of you. Everything's put in to their boxes. I'm really enjoying working from home. A lot of people say it's chaotic right now, but I thrive on bringing order to chaos. I have my to-do list and my agenda for the day color-coded, of course. I even still write things on my on my day planner because I don't wanna you know, miss out on writing in my, in my calendar because it's one of my favorite things to do. My boss always knows what I'm doing because in the morning I'll send her a list of everything I'm planning on accomplishing that day. And at the end of the day, I send her the same list again with all my check marks. So there are no questions out there about my productivity during this time. I'm getting it done, guys. During my free time, I've really enjoyed organizing my pantry. And the other day I had even more time, so I organized my books by color. That just made me real happy. So on my phone, I have this really cool productivity app. It keeps me on track. So let's say I spend 30 minutes working on the budget, then a bell goes off. Then I take a five minute bathroom break. Then I spend another 30 minutes working on the calendar. I get a 10 minute break for coffee. And I just find that really increases my productivity and I really enjoy the bells. Order to chaos, guys, order to chaos. I actually like to set a timer so that every 20 minutes, I just take a little break and uh, make sure I've made progress. Progress is a, a little hard for me because I need to have everything perfect every time. I really wanted to write with pen and paper, but it's so disappointing. I could never get my handwriting just right. So I started typing on the computer but now I can never get my sentences just right. Proofreading is kind of a thing. <laughs> so I'm just gonna review this sentence. Um, again, 37th time's the charm, I hope. Must edit as I go. That's what, that is what I learned. It is what I learned. I love writing, I really do. No, no. I love having written. The process of writing, I do not love. It's taken me uh, six years and there are 30 pages. However, they are all perfectly edited and ready to go. So there's that. Actually, I'm pretty sure this is the worst collection of words ever written. Just recently started selling, selling this. It sounds, sorry. There's a lot of them. So this is Rodan and Fields. They're two doctors, very trustworthy, and they're women. So who doesn't love supporting women on businesses? They're women, I'm a woman, and, and that's how that works. Every skincare regimen has several steps. So this is step one, and then two, and then three, four. Who doesn't love steps to follow, man? This is uh, really not the easiest thing to sell. Some people might call, a, call it a saturated market. Um, but you know, I like a good challenge. So I have an entire uh, spreadsheet of people that I've contacted and I have the columns with their name and how I know them if they're an old friend from high school maybe or a friend of a friend on Facebook. I've had about 7% uh, responses that are um, at least kind in their nose. I'm gonna find somebody in my network who hasn't yet heard of our Rodan Plus Fields and, and make sure that they get some um, intensive renewing serum for their aging face, because they need it. I don't know who you are yet, but you need it. Of course I pay my taxes and do it on time because I like things. I like things like roads without potholes. I like the fire department being available if my house is on fire. I keep my records current all year long. So when it comes time to file my taxes, it's really no big deal. Also, I mean, have you looked lately at a tax form? <laughs> It's like the level of detail and organization is, it's like, you know, that doesn't make you feel, okay, well, you know, I keep, I keep such meticulous records just to make sure I don't miss anything. Like this year, 
<laughs> I almost missed uh, filing my $2.42 stock interest. Can you imagine if I missed that one? My taxes, of course, are already filed. I file them the day you can. Uh, it's a race and I like to win. I want to be the first, always. Do I enjoy this? Is this my passion in life? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, but it's a rule. Actually, it's a law. It's a rule law. And it's important because if you don't do it, you go to jail. And I already have a prison for myself in my head and my body is not going. Do you remember that sale that went wrong in October 2019? I just really feel like I've never truly made that up to you. And it's been weighing on me ever since. You don't, you don't remember? Oh, I remember every moment of it. Well, the numbers that you set for me this year are really high. Could I get them? Yeah, of course I could get them. I'm actually really good at this job, but um, there's a chance I might not get them. So I'd rather cut uh, my law, I mean your losses before that's possible. <clears throat> well, uh, you want feedback from me, uh, constructive on the, oh, well, whew, okay. Uh, want to leave it better than I found it. So, uh, here we go. Uh, meetings are scheduled for an hour, but they always go over, which is super unsensitive to those of us who like to stay out of schedule. That one time I had that big project for Q1 and I got bumped back to Q2. That was upsetting. Well, yeah, I realized it was more time to work on it, but you know, stick to the plan. <laughs> Not that hard. Oh, and uh, also I, I really didn't appreciate that time that you took Jordan's suggestion over mine for incentives for sales numbers. Oh well, yeah, I know not everybody appreciates a nice planner and new colored pencils as an incentive, but some people do. Um, and, and since we're on the topic, I have a, a few others for you. Thanks so much for asking. Hold on, there's a few more. Tell me about you though. Yeah, are you seeing some good applicants? I just want to make sure you really find the person who's right for the job. You know, I mean, the last thing I want is for you to put in this long nine hour work day, walk away with no one. <laughs> That'd be a bummer. Hey, did you get a chance to try that casserole yet? I have a personal motto, which is never come to a meeting empty handed. So for the past nine and a half years at my workplace, I've never shown up to a meeting without snacks. You can't do that in quarantine. So instead, I thought it would be fun to tell all my coworkers and superiors to drop their laundry off on my doorstep. My boss was way behind on her whites. This is what I like to call my DoorDash calendar. So every day of the week, I send DoorDash to a different coworker. I just want them to know I'm thinking of them. I wouldn't say that I need to be needed, no. I mean, am I terrified deep down inside that my coworkers are gonna stop loving me without the opportunity to wait on them hand and foot? Of course I'm not. Why did someone say something? We're doing a whole lot of Zoom calls these days and I just don't ever wanna be caught making a scowly face in a still frame if the internet glitches. So I've been doing these really neat facial smiling exercises so that everyone knows I'm not mad at them. I can hold this bad boy for four and a half hours. They say it's not necessary, but I like to CC each and every individual team member on any electronic mail correspondence I create. I just don't want anyone to feel left out. Plus, everyone loves extra emails, am I right? Just made someone's day with that memo I bet. Now we wait. Everybody says, find your audience. Who are you talking to? Feels like if I do that, I'm gonna leave someone out. And I want the whole world to come to the potluck party of my written word. It was a warm spring morning in March. Okay, but is that gonna offend people who prefer February though? You know what's even more fun than writing for myself though? Editing for others. There's nothing I love like doing work that I will never get credit for. The very worst part about writing is the comments section. So I've created a little system for myself to help me better cope. It's called the hug method. Before I read the comment, my best friend gives me a compliment. And then after I read the comment, my husband squeezes the pain away with a hug. The hug system. That lipstick shade is amazing on you. 
This girl is crazy. Like, seriously, no vowels, nauseated face, weary cat emoji, octopus emoji, Swiss flag emoji? You know what, you leave Switzerland out of this, you heartless troll. <sighs> Tighter, please. I'm going for blackout here, that's better. Oh, I feel very supported. I started selling for the Pampered Chef uh, about five years ago. The thought of anyone else nourishing the people I love and feeling fulfilled by anything that anyone else does for them is, I mean, I wouldn't say it's scary. It's more like, um, like terrifying. I have to admit initially, um, I feel a little guilty saying this out loud, a little shameful, but, um, my motives were selfish. It's just that I cook so much for my neighbors, you know, in my church and um, for food shelters and, and the savings I got from being a consultant were just so dang alluring. I got sucked into the glamorous lifestyle of the MLM consultant. They made me a senior director and then an executive director, that was neat. And then a senior executive director and I was like, whoa. So I started recording some of my sales for my downline gals, you know, I just, I wanted to see them do well and hit those minimums. And they started getting promoted over me and it was like, ah, what are you doing up there? You know, I think tax season just gets a bad rap. I realize that it can be stressful, but it's another wonderful season of life and therefore another wonderful opportunity to take on other people's burdens. I call these simple scones. It stands for savings incentive match plans for employees. Not because they're easy to make, no, they're incredibly labor intensive. So give me that stack of receipts, cousin Joey. There's a new guardian angel in town and she's gonna figure out your AGI. That's adjusted gross income. Oh, this FSA is a total disaster. So many problems to fix. I'm not officially an accountant or anything like that, no, but I took an online course last year just so I'd be able to help out my friends and family members. There's no greater gift than finding money that somebody else almost left on the table, making sure they get it and making sure they know that you got it for them. Did I overextend myself again, trying to do everything for everyone else, ignoring my own physical and emotional house and thereby needing to apply for an extension? I, I, I did, I did do that. Scone, oh, I've never, I've never actually quit a job before. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, I usually just wait until I'm so unhappy that my overaggressive helping pushes people away and I get fired. <laughs> Look at me, I'm integrating. <sighs> and the memories, like touching up the paint after everyone was gone, emptying people's trash cans when they weren't looking. <laughs> the things I'll always treasure. Before I forget, I did get you a little me voluntarily going away from you present. It's also your half birthday, so the timing couldn't have been any better. I'm just gonna miss all our hangout sessions and quality time that we spent together. I mean, fire safety drills, ethics seminars, product launches, team building events. Corporate mandated all of them, but still, memories. I'm just really going to miss picking up bagels for everyone for morning meetings. And if you could just make sure to let whoever replaces me know that Jeremy has a gluten allergy and likes to be included, so you have to go to the bakery across town. Of course it's an out-of-pocket cost. I'm not going to expense the company for that. <laughs> you are funny. I guess I'll just tidy up everyone's workspaces, clear out my desk, deliver the flowers for each coworker along with a handwritten note to drop off the custom birthstone jewelry I had made for each of my supervisors and go. Uh, this is my other job. Yeah. So my jewelry business is going places, but we're not there yet. So how I see this working together is I can still pursue this on the side with a flexible schedule. Not planning on coming in every day, like five days a week in a row. And the salary here is really good, so perfect match. So every day I'm wearing a new pair of statement earrings. It makes me feel better, it makes me feel pulled together, ready for my work day. This is my quarantine 2020 vision board. Glow is my theme word for this quarantine. I want to glow through this and I want people to see my glowing. I'm gonna finally work on my media kit. This is a flyer I got from a conference that I went to two years ago. I'm gonna work on my videography skills. Don't forget, it's game on, not game off, because the world slowed down. No, 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 game on right now. When this is all over, people will look at me and say, you nailed it. You did it. You took that quarantine and you became its boss. And you thrived and you made it work 
and you learned new things and you built new things and you came out of this ready to roar. I could go down in history as the greatest quarantiner. I think I might write a book about that. You might perceive that the world has slowed down right now, but that's not an excuse to not be productive. This is the time to ramp it up. Do what you've always dreamed of. Learn a new skill. Develop a new hobby. Stay active. Keep your mind going. Right? Like, launch what you've dreamed of now. That's what I'm going to do. I have 17 ideas. I'm going to get at least 15 of them accomplished. So today, I'm working on the front cover design of my book book. <laughs> There's going to be a graphic that goes here and my name here. And I think maybe right along the top is where the New York Times bestseller list is going to go. No, I have not actually started writing my book yet, but the idea I have is so revolutionary. It's going to fly off the shelves. My launch party is going to be huh, next level. I'm inviting all of my favorite authors, Tara Westover, Laura Prescott, Stephanie Meyer, even the pioneer woman. And I know they're all going to come because I am a top fan on all of their Facebook pages. I should probably book the photographer for that. So my writing style is this. Okay. I vomit. I throw up everything in my brain onto the page and then I walk away. I just let it sit. I let it marinate in its own bile. And then I come back and I start editing and looking at it. So I basically throw up and then I digest, if that makes sense. So the first thing I'm going to do when my book comes out is I'm going to go to amazon.com and I'm going to look at all the five-star reviews. They better all be five stars. And everyone wants their nails to look nice. Color Street. I got involved in Color Street right as it was starting. I mean, nobody knew about it and it was so trendy. You just had to open the package. That's it. Look at this one. It's called Paris Couture. Mm, so fancy. Look how fun and sparkly that is. Everyone's going to notice your nails. So you just peel that off. It's like a sticker. Everybody loves stickers. And look at that. Look at that. I've sold it to my, te my kids' teachers, the neighborhood gals, my barista. I've sold it to everybody. You give someone your credit card to buy groceries, and you just kind of let your hand linger until they go, oh, I like your, thank you, Color Street. You're waving at your kids to come get in the car. You just kind of wave your hand strategically, and the parent volunteer getting the kids in the car is like, oh, I like your nails. You're like, oh. Thanks for noticing. I forgot those were on. Yes, thanks for asking. There's a reason why I chose Paris Couture. Guess who's going to Paris because they got top sales last year. Ah, this girl. What do those look like? Diamonds? Mm -hmm. They sure do. I'm diamond status. Filing 2020 taxes was really hard for me this year uh, because I had to face the fact that I had not met my 2020 income goals. Yes, um, I do realize there was a global pandemic. And probably nobody reached their 2020 income goals, but do I do my own taxes? No. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I can DIY a raised garden bed, canopy bedding, biolage. I mean, not, not that I actually would, but I could. But I will not DIY my taxes. Why not? <laughs> well, let me take you down a little walk through my income sources. <laughs> Buckle in. Right, main job, main income, taxes are taken out of each paycheck. Side hustle number one is a LLC that I own. Side hustle number two is an LLC that I own with a friend. Side hustle number three is kind of a combination of my Google AdSense income, money I make from influencer posts, and the money I made for my seven week course on iPhone filters. Side hustle number four is my oily dollars from oils, selling, Sell, it's an, a multi-level marketing business. That's MLM number one. I also sell clean beauty products, children's book, fair trade jewelry, vitamin supplements. I also sell Norwex cleaning products. And side hustle number, I, side hustle number five, seven. I have lost count. Um, and this is why I do not do my own taxes. So much income from so many places. It's, ah! <laughs> 
Um, but I do use the cutest CPA. Her Instagram handle is your CPA bestie. And if you book with her, make sure you use the code tax goals for a discount on her services. I get a little bit of a kickback from it, which is income source number seven. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. It's not you. It's me. I just, I just don't feel like you're letting me shine enough here. You know, like for example, last week I brought in coffee for the whole team and all I got were thank yous. Not even one person posted about it on Instagram. Jenny is doing really well, obviously. She'll be great to fill my spot. I know she's been eyeing it ever since she started. Oh, you didn't notice that she was eyeing my spot? I know you didn't notice. Also, I really don't think you truly appreciate my four other side hustles because you're all, we need 100% of your creative energy. And I'm like, well, that just feels really bossy. Uh, also, I feel like, especially with Robin Hood now, being unemployed is cooler than being employed. So I'm just gonna try that route for now. I'm gonna be so honest with you. I read and reread this job description before I walked in those beautiful rotating glass doors today. I think there may be an opportunity for us to create a new position. For example, uh, a smell coordinator. This room, the scent, mixology in here is off. So smell branding would be definitely a gift of mine. When working from home, I find that one of the most important things is curating my environment. Scent is so important for workflow. Mm, okay, that's good, but it has to be in balance. Oh, yes. They all just have to work together in harmony. Okay, that's good. say that this is more important than my laptop right now. It's just like really important for me to be surrounded by living things. Like it's hard to be creative if I don't feel like I'm in a tropical jungle. I always keep freshly sharpened number two pencils and a vintage ceramic on the desk somewhere. I don't use them, but I like knowing they're there. <gasps> oh my goodness, that bird. Oh, oh she's building a nest. She's gonna be a mother. <laughs> this was my grandmother's. It's over 120 years old and I like to have it right here in my way. It's like having her in my work environment with me. Okay. Gosh, that makes me think of elementary school. Writing is, um, it's an incredible uh, release. It's like this unbridled tango performed in the eye of a hurricane betwixt myself and the guardian of my secrets, the sacred page. Of course, that's only if I can make myself start, which doesn't happen often. I don't mean to be dramatic, but I would rather listen to top 40 music than start the writing process before my creative fruit has ripened. It's a simple five-step process to invite the muse into my space. No fewer than two candles, essential oils, flowers, sharp number two pencil. I put it behind my ear because it's so whimsical. I'm now ready to start creating, but I'm exhausted and starving, and I don't want to force it. Maybe we'll try again tomorrow. And isn't there something lovely about an essay with no words? Isn't the blank page a composition unto itself? Just... <sighs> Before I sit down, I really like to anoint my seat with um, my Thieves essential oil infused spray. Thieves is absolutely murderous to bacteria. Oh, did I not mention that I sell for Young Living Oils? I just so value their blends, the artistry, peace and calming, forgiveness, valor, courage, dragon time. What I've started doing, as I've just gotten more experienced and confident, is taking their blends and mixing them together to create my own mega blends. I call this one 
dragon forgiveness. It is, it is pungent. <laughs> it's definitely not a pyramid scheme, or as I like to call them, cruelty triangles. No. If I had to ascribe a shape to it, it's like a blob, like um, like a, like a paramecium, like a single-celled organism with um, irregular borders. But yes, I, I, I do get a percentage of their sales. Um, I, I was, I was going to do my taxes. Um, indeed I was, but then I, um, really, 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 really didn't feel like it. And then, as fate would have it, I watched the second half of A Beautiful Mind during a truly glorious bout of insomnia the other night. And I was reminded that math contains within its borders its own kind of sacred poetry. And then I did feel like it. So I sat down for a few minutes and I looked at the laptop and I invited the numbers to congregate beneath my tactile members, awaiting a sacred tabernacle betwixt them. But then once again, I just really didn't wanna. And so here I stand with my back up against the cold, unforgiving wall of my tax extension deadline. What have I learned about myself while doing my taxes? I'm so glad you asked. I've learned that there are negative numbers in the positive numbers and positive numbers in the negative numbers. I've also learned I spend a lot on essential oils. Like a lot, a lot. It's, it's becoming a problem at this point. I never noticed your office had no windows before. That must mean something. It's just really important to me to be true to myself. And so I would like to invite you to make yourself comfortable for my I quit monologue. I was swinging my wicker shopping basket over my arm, wandering lonely through the handmade soap aisle at Whole Foods, just a swirling, whirling ball of intrigue to those around me, picking up each bar of soap and smelling it with appreciation. Those around me must have been wondering, who is this girl so whimsical, so full of secrets and intrigue? Where were we? I was quitting. That's right. This place has been a truly immersive cocoon for me. But like all caterpillars, I have uh, liquefied down to my very bones, and I now burst forth from the mother shell, prepared to spread my wings and fly. Did I just, I said spread my wings and fly. Oh, cliches taste so bad in the human mouth, don't they? That made me very sad, like walking through a Walmart. I've also, I feel I should mention just on an exit note that I've been feeling very spiritually bored and also personally attacked in this workplace. And I know from past experiences that my feelings are always 100% accurate and have never led to massive unravelings in my personal life. Wait. So do I have uh, experience in customer service interactions? Um, I guess that depends just over 15 years of experience as the head of concierge for Marriott Enterprises, but I, I doubt that applies. Spanish, yeah, I mean, I, I lived in Spain for four years, so I guess you could say I'm conversational, but I'm sure you're gonna want somebody more fluent than that. Working from home has been, um, I'm not gonna cry, um, the most beautiful experience of my entire life so far. I, uh, I wake up every morning and I feel like I'm in a dream. A beautiful, beautiful dream from which I never want to awaken. I was worried for a minute because Zoom started giving out unlimited meeting minutes. Uh, and that was just a whole lot of FaceTime for me, as you can imagine. But I, I did come up with a, a foolproof system. Concerned nod. Call this one the lean back and chin grab. I call this one the stare off and pretend to consider what you're saying. It's really simple. So I'm generally reading four or five books at any given time, um, but all this extra time working from home has really upped my stack. Smell that knowledge. Sweet, sweet research. Look, this is not the first time that mankind has been in a quarantine type situation. I mean, as everybody knows, there was the Black Plague of Venice all the way back in 1392. And then, of course, we had yellow fever in 1793. And that was followed by typhus shortly after that in 1892. And then, of course, I write all the time. I'm writing constantly.
reading and then writing, reading, then writing, reading, then writing. It's a, it's a never ending uh, thrill ride for me. The research stage in particular, it's, it's sheer delight. In fact, I have uh, come up with my own special name for it, procrastor research, patent pending. For every hour I spend writing, I have spent somewhere between nine and 12 hours procrastor researching in advance. It puts me in the zone. I'm just not so good at the uh, hit publish part. I just concluded this article uh, on Daniel of the Old Testament, specifically drawing parallels between the 6th century government structure of Babylon ruled by Nebuchadnezzar the Assyrian and later his grandson Belshazzar, as everyone knows, uh, to our current culture. I have an Old Testament studies concentration from my alma mater, which, as everyone knows, is Latin for nurturing mother, but I still hardly feel qualified to write this. I like my articles to be rich and dense, like a tiny, decadent 700-word bite of prose. Although this article is just under 3,000 words, so I guess it's more like a Costco cheesecake. Part of the writing process that I find just uh, utterly intoxicating is the editing. There is nothing like the thrill of going over and over and over and over and over the same bit of writing, seeing if I can squeeze in just one more qualifier. You know what I always say, why settle for less words when more words are available? I, uh, I don't know everything that there is to know about the science of Norwex or indeed the microfiber cloth. I have simply been conducting a little bit of my own research very casually for the last 19 months or so here in my home. And of course, at the same time, I've been running very rudimentary experiments to test the validity of their claims. Smells effective. These spaces between the fibers in the microfiber cloth pick up more dirt and or debris uh, from your surfaces than a cotton rag could alone. Approximately 99% of whatever is on your counters will be lifted because of the polyamide blends. I don't want to get too technical, but I obviously will. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, am, I, I am not a consultant. I'm, I, am, I am technically a consultant, but selling requires um, talking to so, so many people. One of my girlfriends suggested that I have one of those parties uh, wherein you throw a, a slab of raw chicken onto the counter, um, like so, and then you clean it to the amazement and wonder of a gaggle of your, your peers. And I, I thought I, I could do that, um, or I could uh, close in on myself and speak to no one. Uh, taxes are great. Of, of course they are. Nobody wants to talk to you when you're doing your taxes, which is really wonderful. It's wonderful for situations like coffee houses, for example, where small talkers might want to approach you and chatter on about banal things like the weather. You just say, I'm doing my taxes, and it saves you the trouble of having to walk out on someone mid-sentence. Have you read this popular book and such? I'm doing my taxes. Oh, I'm yammering on about some app that I'm apparently very interested in. Taxes. What bands do you like to taxes? It really gives new meaning to the word tax shield. Of course I do my own taxes, but it, it took me many years to figure out how to do them competently. I wasn't about to go it alone the first time, absolutely not. As a professionally invisible person, I devised a plan to disguise myself as a fiddle fig leaf tree, and I lived for three weeks in my accountant's office undetected. I got very good at doing this. It was uh, physically incredibly painful, but still less painful than looking unprepared. Uh, can I help you with... Your taxes, gosh, I, I don't know. I mean, I have been doing mine for about four years now, and yes, I'm on the fifth year of my CPA licensure, just as a little treat to myself, but I doubt I'm qualified to help you there. Not that I expect that uh, it will change anything in this work environment whatsoever, but I think I should let you know that I will uh, permanently be stepping away uh, from my role here as a head of research. Gosh, this is even more awkward than I feel in everyday life, which is already very, very, very awkward. What is my reason for leaving this position? Uh, the answers are myriad. Uh, for one thing, uh, this company is huge. I mean, there are just way, 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 way too many people around. Just walking into the break room drains my battery to half-life. What are you doing? Where did you get that blouse? Et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's just really, it's soul-crushing stuff. Uh, but beyond that, uh, I suppose I'll just let this series of very carefully constructed line graphs and mosaic charts that I've painstakingly assembled do the talking for you. Now, the x-axis here represents my affinity for your corporate culture, and the y- Do I have any feedback for you? Um, that is a great question. Uh, I will think about that and consider it. Uh, you can expect an email reply from me within six to 12 months.
Can you tell me a little bit about your 401k plans? Self-directed, simple, safe harbor, tiered, platinum? Hopefully not, you know, traditional. You might want to be aware that uh, the coffee maker was plugged into the same outlet as the water cooler, which as you know is, a, is an OSHA hazard. As soon as I knew we were going down in lockdown, I got online and I ordered eight pairs of my favorite comfortable pants. And I've just been rotating out of them every day. I've got my quarantine uniform and it's comfy. I have to say the Slack channel for my company is uh, getting a little crazy. We have a Slack channel for COVID-19 discussion. And I like to go in there uh, about every hour just to check and see kind of what people are saying. I, I have a tendency sometimes, depending on the day, to uh, be a little long-winded about my opinion on what's happening. Uh, but then there's some days where people share some stuff, some theories that they have, and I don't want to share what I know because I think I think what I know about it is going to scare them. I had to take a 20% pay cut. You're keeping me on board? I'm happy with that. You're going to stay loyal to me, I'm going to stay loyal to you. I'll take less money. Besides, as long as I have my job, I know that I have my job so I can plan accordingly. I can cut back my budget now that I know it's 20% less. I'm glad I ordered my comfy clothes at the beginning of this because I can't do it now. Also, I told you so. What am I, what am I writing about? That's a great question. I, I actually would prefer for you to tell me what I should write about. I cannot decide it's too hard. <laughs> I write, 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 write one day, make fantastic progress, go to bed, wake up the next morning, check what I wrote, delete, 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 delete. Overthinking is my superpower. One of my greatest fears is that everything will be lost and all the progress that I've somehow made will be gone forever. So I not only save it to my hard drive, I save it to Dropbox and I save it to Google Drive, this hard drive, to this hard drive, to this hard drive, so that I have it backed up in no less than six places. All the bases are covered, plus several other baseball fields of bases, all covered. It is best to not stay hyper-focused on the hypothetical view of you because that is counterproductive to discovering the non-hypothetical or genuine view of you. If I think in run-on sentences, how am I not supposed to write in run-on sentences? I started selling Tupperware back in college, and if you can believe it, that's been 25 years that I've been selling Tupperware. Who has never heard of the Tupperware brand? Nobody. That classic orange plastic has really stood the test of time. It's just a tried and true family oriented brand. And I know everything about it. I know at what temperature they melt at. I know at what temperature they maintain their cold and their hot foods. I know how they best are stored in cabinets. I know the best type of dishwasher soap to wash them with to make them last the longest. I'm just a walking Tupperware encyclopedia. And I've been able to fund all my vacations over the years. Of course, I always go back to the same lodge. I don't really see a reason to go anywhere else. I love that place. It's just been a really good, solid side income for me for, like I said, 25 years. Now, I've been tempted, I have to admit, Pampered Chef has a few nice things, but I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change. No. Yes. Yeah, yes, I, I already filed my taxes. Why? Did I do something wrong? Uh, the threat of federal imprisonment has been my lifelong companion in making sure that I do not do my taxes incorrectly. Yet I am still somehow sure that I will one day end up in federal prison for doing my taxes wrong. No, I have not been audited ever, but I know it's coming. And so I have kept every single tax document and receipt since I started earning paychecks 25 years ago. So here are some receipts from 2009, just in case um, the ink is, is fading, but um, you can still kind of kind of read, read it. That's 2000. Oh, this one, this one's 2007. <laughs> I remember. No, I don't remember that actually, but I have the receipt just in case. If the government ever comes after me for a mistake, I got the documents to prove my innocence. Yes, of course. I use a tax professional to do my taxes. I use uh, the same tax professional that I've used forever. My parents use that. 
text guy. My best friend Sharon uses that text guy. Uh, I actually pay him double every year for uh, having to go through all of my taxes multiple times in my excessive questioning to make sure he did everything right. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Um, this is this was a tough decision for me. Um, I know it's hard for you. It's it's been really hard for me. I've been losing sleep for weeks, months about this. Um, do you do you really think this is the right decision? Really, the only reason I'm leaving is because I got an offer I cannot refuse from my friend Sharon, and she's just always been really good about giving me constructive feedback and. Oh, yeah, of course you have, you have two, but it, it's Sharon, you know, I know I've been working here since 1997, but we've been friends since preschool. <sighs> Sharon has dibs. Don't worry though. Uh, a few weeks ago, I posted a mock job on a job website and I have pre-selected three fantastic candidates for my position. They'll be coming in tomorrow for their interviews and I am happy to stay on board as long as needed to help them transition. Do you think, do you think that will work okay? Is that okay for you? Hey mom, I, um, I just don't know. I mean, I know, I know I already accepted Sharon's offer, so I have to, you're right. <sighs> okay. I have to do it. Are you, are you sure I have to do it? Okay. Uh, Mrs. Miller, thank you so much for your advice. I, I really appreciate it. Oh, uh, my last day. Uh, well, what's the best, uh, last day for you? What do you think? Previous experience. I got previous experience coming out of my ears. Semester and a half of film school, professional dog walker, street entertainer. For a summer, I worked in the Adirondacks, rad. Barista, a life coach, and a union certified forklift operator. It's what I bring to the table. I just find the term workspace uh, to be so like boring and confining. I prefer the term creativity cube. It's my work for it. Let the productivity begin. Oh, oh. Zoom calls can be such a drag, man. So I like to mix it up by always coming in a different costume. Hogwarts is my home. The Zoom is strong with this one. And I'd like to circle back to that idea you just proposed. You're under arrest for boring everybody, Carl. Am I right? What you got there? Oh, that looks fun. Sometimes you just gotta get that blood flowing, you know? You gotta mix it up a little bit. When that happens, I do a little thing I like to call catch with myself. Oh! Nice ones! Oh! I'm fine. The more things I'm doing at one time, the better, really. Staves away those pesky little thoughts like sadness and boredom and loneliness that I don't have the time to work through. I'm building! Writing is like a slip and slide for your brain. Sit in a chair, uh, you square. I do my best work on an exercise ball. It bounces the thoughts loose. I like to keep it fun. I like to keep it happy, you know, so sue me. I'm an upbeat kind of gal, so uh, I can't write about a single thing going on in this current dumpster fire. I'm like the fire extinguisher for bad vibes. A blog is really perfect for me because I find that I can just sort of like blah, brain dump on whatever I'm into right now. Here's a few of my last posts. Start the process of rearranging your pantry. Best games to play behind the wheel. 10 ways to use your snowboard when there's no snow. I made it up to six. Still a good article though. A novel would be like writing about the same places and the same people during the same period of time. God, that made me so sad. Cookie toss. Another thing I have going on, which I really love, is my dream napkin. I wake up in the middle of the night, I get these great ideas for articles and I write them down. Like for example, Ufta hair bow blender. Was it upside down? So sfrainy. Abadash Sesfadod. Whatever, it's gonna be awesome. You know why I was able to do all that? One word, two syllables, leggings. Leggings, leggings, leggings. It's two syllables, leggings. I am a part of an MLM.
thank you for asking. It is currently one of my favorite 14 hobbies that I am a part of. Wearing leggings is a lifestyle choice for me anyway, so this just felt supernatural. Not supernatural like divine, although there was a little bit of that too. You tell me one other article of clothing that can go from Taekwondo to the grocery store to a formal dinner party. Leggings. We got Damask. We got Chevron. We got Brocade. We got Basket Weave. We got Stripes. We got Holiday. We got Ditsy Floral. You never have to commit to one print again for the rest of your life. Let that sink in a second. The best part about being in an MLM, though, is the conventions. <laughs> Just a rectangular ballroom, poorly ventilated, full of hundreds and hundreds of consultants, AKA potential homies. I mean, if that's not everyone's definition of a great time, I don't know what is. My life philosophy is that anything can be fun with just a little bit of effort and taxes are no exception, okay? Let's turn this into a revenue rager, people, come on. The most fun part of anything studies have like probably shown is the anticipation. So let's get this prep party started. Here is my tax backpack, tax snacks, tax cap, max tax schnapps, 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 whatever. Head of household, take a drink. I'm like the Dr. Seuss of tax preparations. Now we get to these tax stacks. We got this, this is good, this is good. I got that feeling coming up. It's like um, acid reflux, but worse. I think it's boredom. It tastes so bad in the human mouth. I know what's wrong, <laughs> duh, idiot, music. You know what, I'm just gonna, before I finish this, I'm gonna just change the lyrics to some of the Beatles songs to be about tax preparation. Go to the recording studio, lay down some tracks, and I'll come back, we'll do this properly. Here we go. Standard deduction, I can't remember my Thank you, next, that you was written out just phonetically, like the Ariana Grande song. Never mind, I quit, swish. I've just come to realize that the corporate culture here is not so much a fit for me. It's not so much that I hate Excel, it's that Excel hates me. I feel like the job title was a little misleading and implied that there was gonna be a lot more travel. The most travel I've done this year is to get down to Staples for equipment procurement. Where's the buzz in that? Also, I'm just gonna come right out and say it. Gotta be blunt, that's how I roll. I feel like there's a little bit of passive aggression in this place from time to time. I mean, just last week, and I'm not trying to throw my man Carl under the bus, but he said to me, and I quote, would you mind preparing an annual budget and analyzing the variances? What did I ever do to you, Carl? I do think there are a few things that uh, you're gonna wanna be aware of as I uh, make my graceful exit, just in the spirit of full transparency and disclosure. I may or may not have instituted a game called Copy or Ping Pong. It may or may not have damaged several buttons on the main panel. There is a small but very real possibility that I began tunneling my way under my cubicle wall with a plastic spoon a la Count of Monte Cristo. This place is the Chateau Deef, man. Oh, no, 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 I will not be requiring a job reference. Sold my condominium and bought myself a sweet little catamaran. I'm be sailing my way around the world. I wonder how long it takes. Six weeks, 10 weeks? I don't know, we're gonna figure it out on the high seas. We're just gonna do a little whirly do around South America and bitty, bitty, boo, up to the Mediterranean Sea. It's gonna be awesome. The person I'd be working for, are they gonna be here for a while? Um, how long until I can take over their position. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand that that's not the job I'm here interviewing for today. I'm a natural leader. Boss. I did find this really great tracking system online so I can track my employees and make sure they're working. I do see that some of them are slacking and taking advantage of this quarantine situation and have to make some uncomfortable Zoom calls later. You can't slack. No, you gotta ramp up the productivity, actually. We cut down on commute times, getting ready times, shower times. So that's at least, what, an hour and 20 minutes back in your day that you can work? That's how I'm seeing it. So instead of an eight hour day, everybody should be putting in a nine hour and 20 minute day. There's a lot of unknowns right now. And I have a lot of family members and a lot of friends that are a little nervous about that. But, you know, I have to say, I have to say that excites me. <laughs> A little bit of the unknown out there, you know, a little conflict and the wondering and the worry. I'm into that. Yesterday, 
I got so much done. So much done. I can't sit. I just can't. Man, I am all in or nothing. So since yesterday was good, today's a wash. I'm taking a nap. The most challenging part of my entire writing process is the details. Why do we need so many details? Why can't we just get to the point? Minutia kills me. So I keep writing this and I and it's done in a thousand words, which I realize is a blog post and not a book. In fact, I'm thinking about starting a whole new genre of writing, a book. It's a cross between a blog and a book and it doesn't waste your time. You're welcome. While I'm writing, I like to have at least seven other things going on around me. For example, right now I'm watching the Weather Channel. I have an entrepreneurship podcast going on. I'm boiling water for dinner while monitoring my kids on their virtual piano lesson, while scratching my dog's belly with my foot, while eavesdropping on my neighbors who are arguing, while ordering new kickboxing gloves on Amazon. Better busy than bored. Feedback? Oh, I love feedback. Uh, the more the better and be honest, I can take it. What I don't appreciate is when I try to return the favor to other writers and they cry. And they always cry. There's no crying in writing. You know what? This is taking too much of my time. I am going to begin the process of hiring a ghost writer to write this book for me. In fact, I think I'm going to specifically look for Enneagram sixes to ghost write my book because I understand they would rather be told what to write than coming up with their own concept. So this is gonna work out fantastic. This is me before I started using Monet products. This is me now. You know, people used to call me Karen all the time when I had that yucky old dry gross hair. And now I only get called Karen like once a month. That's more for my attitude than my hair though. I've been selling Monet hair care products for about two years and I have the one and only track record in the entire company of not one person ever saying no to me. One time I even got Howie Mandel to buy some. That's how good I am. No, no, this is not my main job. I also have a job where I'm the boss of actual people in an office. I do that just for fun. Before I did Monet, I did sell for another multi-level marketing company and did very, very well. I was actually able to sell my position and my entire downline for six figures. So that set me up very well to afford the Monet hair care line. Yeah, I've heard the rumors of clumps of hair falling out, people going bald, and other generalizations, but I, I just refuse to believe that's true. I think people are lying because they're jealous. They're probably named Karen. I hate tax season. Every year it requires me to shift my attention from what I'm doing and look at the past. And I don't have time to look at the past. Who wants to deal with the past? No, I like to live in the present and move on. I have to meticulously go through my income and my expenses and document everything, file it away. And I mean, who just wants to go through what you spent on office supplies last year? I mean, who cares? <laughs> who cares? In an ideal world, I would have someone in my life who just monitors all that for me and um, just keeps track of everything that comes in and everything that goes out and files my receipts and files my taxes for me and all I have to do is sign something and it takes one second as opposed to hours of meticulously going through. I'm sorry, what? Oh, that exists? And it's called a bookkeeper? Interesting. So if I hire a bookkeeper, they would do all that for I me. Mean, no, that's tempting, but then I would have to relinquish control to them. And as much as I hate it, I still have to be in control. I can't fathom the thought of handing that over, handing anything over. I got, I got it. You know, I've got it. I, I've got it. I'm just going to go do it. Oh, hi. Did you get my email? Yes. Huh? Oh no, no, I'm done now. Bye. Not two weeks. <laughs> I don't think so. You want to you talk? I'll cut to the chase. I quit. What, what more would you like to hear? Well, uh, it's, it, it is not me, it is you. Uh, you clearly did not see the big picture when you promoted Sam over me for regional director. Anyone who sees potential in Sam over me is not somebody I want to continue working for anymore. Okay, Sam? <laughs> Seriously? Yes, of course, I realize I've only worked here two weeks and Sam's been here two years, but I, I just don't see why that's a factor in your decision. 
I mean, when I walk in a room, it, I just, it just says boss. Okay. So I give myself a two week limit. If I don't reach boss in two weeks, I'm out moving on. Okay. Let someone else use this power potential in their workspace or better yet I'll work for myself. See ya. So it's my, um, greatest. I mean, Oh my gosh, you guys have the neatest little desert critters out there. Look at that. What was the question? What is my greatest ambition in life? I mean, well, I... <laughs> right, so what you mean is, okay, so my greatest ambition. So, oh, I know this one. <laughs> Dennis, I totally see your point of view. And Anne Marie, I also see your point of view. Um, all points of view are at this moment seen and heard and felt and appreciated. And now, if you will excuse me, I am going to take a 45 minute nap. Still the apocalypse. Yep. Okay. Oh, pandemic night night. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel so much better after that workday nap. Now let's see. Should I numb my personal feelings with food or TV next? I find it's really helpful to just make myself a little to-do list at the beginning of the day. It's just so important to stay on a schedule. Overall, I've really enjoyed working from home. There seems to be just a, a lot less conflict overall and people stepping on one another, getting in each other's personal space. When things get tense on a Zoom call, all you have to do is freeze and pretend your internet's gone out. My writing hours every day are from 5.15 until 6. It is um, my sacred time. It's the only time I can guarantee that the entire house will be quiet and everyone will be asleep. And my husband will be off to work. I've made a writing schedule for myself and the schedule is really uh, helping me stay on the rails. So I'll just consult that and we'll see. Okay, so I thought about making a writing schedule and I never actually made a writing schedule. I put the pro in procrastination. Procrastination, more like pronapstination because the worst is, is writer's block. It just throws me off. It drains my battery faster than an hour of C-SPAN. I mean, there is nothing worse than nothing because nothing means that I have nothing to give to the people who are coming to me expecting something. They're gonna be so disappointed. Anytime I sit down to write, I just worry that if I voice my opinion, I'm, I'm gonna offend. Somebody is going to feel agitated or annoyed or confused or disturbed or flabbergasted or interrupted or dismayed or confounded or disconcerted or roused or ruffled or unhinged. And really, I can see everybody's point of view. Oh yeah, yeah, I, um, I do. I sell uh, for Beauty Counter. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely did not want to. Um, but then my sister-in-law asked me if I would, and I was like, yes. There was this mixer at my sister-in-law's house uh, the month I started, just a bunch of local reps, and we sat in a circle, and we uh, each had to say something about ourselves. And I had to go first, and it was the worst day of my life. One of the senior executive directors said, um, don't be afraid to share the products you like with the people you love. And I was like, whoa, this chick wants to fight me. So you have to hit $1,200 every six months to stay in good standing. And I usually, I just buy all the products myself, you know, just so as not to bother anyone. It's a small price to pay to make sure nobody else feels uncomfortable and then abandons you. Taxes, I don't like them. I don't think I like them. Everybody else I know doesn't seem to like them and I really value their opinion. And by they, I mean every person I know or have ever come in contact with. But I mean, there's good and bad things about taxes, right? There's a yin and a yang. The good things are it helps you stay organized in your finances. Um, oh, you can treat your refund like you won the lottery. That could be fun, yeah. Oh, paying them uh, keeps you out of jail, which I think is nice. 
On the other hand, there's been enormous changes to tax codes this year, and I see how that could really be very painful for some people to have to navigate. It's really, I guess what I'm trying to say is I see both sides. Uh, I, I did, I, I started my taxes this month, of course, um, mainly because the thought of a government audit sounds more painful than being bitten by a thousand baby coyotes. I mean, look, there's just a lot to it. It all started to feel a little bit overwhelming. And I watched 38 cat videos online. I wrote a poem, created a secret handshake with myself. <sighs> and now here we are with nothing to do but confront the task at hand. Enter deductions. What do you mean? Put in my, I, why didn't you ask me earlier if you wanted them now? <clears throat> yeah, no, I guess I could ask for help. Sure either from a family member or from a tax professional, but that might mean inconveniencing somebody that I know. And so you know what? I think I'll just drag this out for the next three weeks by myself and see if inwardly, because it's worked really well in the past. <sighs> so there is something um, that I have been meaning to talk to you uh, about. It's difficult. It's not difficult. It's not difficult, difficult, difficult. It's, um, it's just not, um, it's, you know what? I, I, I am going to grab us each, um, a hot tea and then I'll be right back and we can just, we can, we can come back and we'll do a little, we'll circle back to where we were right now. Just in this moment, you just sit tight. Hold on one second. Okay. There we go. Tea. Mmm. Hi tea. Hi tea. T for two. Okay. Um, time to, time to spill. <laughs> Ridiculous colloquialism. Okay. We can do this. I mean, I, I, I can do this. You, um, you, you don't have to do anything except just sit there and be who you are and just feel how you feel. And I accept it. So you be me, you be you, <laughs> you be you and I'll be me. And we'll just, um, will be us. Good. This is going great. So I think what's going to happen now is I'm going to say, um, some words and those words, uh, will happen in a certain order and it will become a sentence, uh, which will be in English. Um, because that's the language I happen to learn first. No other reason. It's just, you know, that's the way the chips fell. Could I just borrow your blazer, Mrs. Anderson? Would that be okay? <sighs> okay. So you want to hear what I have to tell you Get to the point. Of course you do. <laughs> we have that we can do. Maybe some vocal warm-ups uh, would help. Ready? Here we go. La 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 la. Chip off the tongue. Red leather, yellow leather. Right. Of course you have other appointments today. Of course you do. Um, I was just thinking um, <clears throat> that maybe potentially I would um, would not come in um, to work tomorrow, and then possibly for many many days thereafter potentially, if it's convenient for you, extending into perpetuity. Thanks for watching this compilation of Enneagram types at work. Hope it made you laugh. Hope it made your work day a little easier. I won't tell your boss that you spent work time, company time, watching a YouTube video. You know, it's probably gonna make you more productive because you know your Enneagram type, right? Right. Go ahead and check out another video on our channel. Stay here, hang out a while. Make sure you subscribe so we can continue bringing more Enneagram content to get you through your day, friends. That's what we're here for.